Well, we've got all kinds of things going on, going down here at Sudden Homestead, as always. Fencing, fencing plans have been developing. Got the rest of our fencing for our garden as well. This is like big, exciting update. Got two goats. We got a mama goat and her baby goat. You will be meeting them here very shortly. Lots of things coming up in this vlog. Hopefully the rest of the seeds planted, the potatoes cut, potatoes planted, fencing done. Let's see what this looks like at the end of uh, five to seven days. Those are my hopes for some of the time coming up. So here is mama, mama Oreo, and there is baby princess Reese Cup. We will be holding them and show them and Oh, 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 yeah. Right now they're getting used to the dogs. Mm-hmm, and dogs are getting used to them. So, we got lots of little goats snorting. They've been together, though, two days. She snorts at them, but they do sleep in the same room at night, at least for temporary, for right now, while everyone gets to know each other. The baby is about 10 weeks old or so, so the mama really is working on, you know, kicking her off and weaning her. So the mama is a pygmy goat and Nigerian dwarf goat cross, and the baby is also, obviously has some pygmy in there, and then Nigerian goat cross as well. In the morning, chick report. And then there's the fencing that we got. This is for the garden up here. Hopefully you can see our yellow string and where we've got it marked out. We're gonna do the fencing. I've, I've told Travis, I said, I even want the stump in there because I'm gonna set pots on that and around it. And so we have it marked outside the garden area. Obviously room to walk and room to do even more. So that's exciting. Yes, Benjamin, joy of all joys. They had all kinds of little that's baked goods me. marked down at Walmart the other night. Yes, so saved a dollar 69 cents. Basically every kid is gonna get three little mini cupcakes. Super fun. You don't mind, do we? Mm -mm, no complaints. Daniel loves climbing that tree. Climbing it with your lightsaber, huh? Country boy fun in the dirt pile. Oh, I love how you put those little branches on him, Daniel. No, I and you working with your stick? Oh, you got a stick in your truck. I love it. Oh, and cupcake on your face. This is a good start to a new day. Oh yeah, beep beep. Are you going off the ra Oh, crash. How fun. Good job, Gabriel. Benjamin, you have figured this out. Are you guys making vehicle repairs here? Dad would be proud. You hammering? Down here with the goats now. We've been outside many hours. We actually got a bunch of our schoolwork done up at the picnic table. It's just, the weather is glorious, so we've been enjoying it, doing our outside schooling. Just finished our reading. And so now we're back down here with the goats. And Travis is over there. They are working on fencing now. We're doing a 100 by 100 fenced area. Of course, these are little goats. Oh, it's on our lap. Mm -hmm. uh, you are on my lap. And we have some movable fencing that will section off different parts. Anyway, so what I've been doing with the goats, whenever we got them about two days ago, of course, they were very nervous when we brought them home, but I could tell they still had a good temperament. Um, the people that we got them from said they got them from about a herd of 100 or so goats. So they weren't socialized very much, unsocialized goats. The people that we bought them from had them about a month. And they were really hoping that the mama goat would be more of like a weed eater, which she was not. They, just because they're goats doesn't necessarily mean that they'll eat every possible wild plant that you have. So anyway, they decided to sell the mama and the baby together and that they would try to get into some pigs. So we brought them home the other night. What my mom has always done in her vast animal knowledge is just basically make the animals eat out of your hand. Um, and that's how they get their food as far as taming. So that's what I've been doing to bond with this mama goat and this baby goat. All of their grain has been coming directly from our hands for now. So we have a whole little family situation that has to go down. The dogs have to get to know the goats. 
goats have to get to know the dogs. The cats have to get to know the goats. <laughs> the goats uh, have to get used to the noise of a whole bunch of chickens and a few little turkeys and their brooders. So things going down on our farmyard. So this is day two. Yesterday we just really, we held them a lot. We held the baby a lot. I mean, we're continuing that today. So we've all been getting to know each other, but I feel like now today too, I mean, it's actually, it's evening now. I think it might be six o'clock. What in the world? Uh, actually, okay, I just checked, it's 4.30. I feel like on day two, we are all getting to know each other well. Amelia's been down here. Anytime I have not been able to find Amelia today, I just look down here to the goats and she's holding the goats and loving up on the goats. And mama goat's getting to know us real well. Anyway, it's just, it is going even better than I expected, getting everyone acclimated to our first little set of goats here. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how our camera angles will go now vlogging and holding a goat, but this is Princess, Princess Reese Cup. She is, she's on my lap here. There's mama. Hey, mama. They are having grain out of the hand. There we go. Good job, Daniel. So baby's about 10 weeks old and um, usually about eight weeks old or so, they start their weaning process. The goat chewed all my shirt. Yeah, yeah, they, they do like the to explore baby. fabrics and other things. No. Potato. No, tomato. It's a potato. Tomatoes. Benjamin's determined that we're doing tomatoes, but they're potatoes. So what I'm doing. Tomatoes. Oh, everybody's busy doing other things. Benny is watching mama. Tomatoes. And hopefully I'm gonna finally plant these things either tomorrow or the next day. And I've been told you cut them into pieces and let them cure for a day or two before putting them in the ground. And then some people just put the whole potato in the ground. We're gonna give it a go, cutty things. Oh look at my muscles. Look at your muscles. Now Benjamin, it's not as innocent as you think. Yeah, but they're not innocent. When I first started, I knew he'd be down here in my armpit. When I first started, I knew he'd be down here in my armpit. I'm tired and I'm dirty and it's late now. You can see darkness is upon us in the land, but I did get the 50 pounds of seed potatoes cut. Now I have not been here doing potatoes this whole time. Had a good call with my friend for an hour. You know I can chat. Was down with the kids in the dirt and with the goats and Travis got a stump pulled out. We've just had a good yeehaw time this evening. So now that I'm filthy, I'm gonna bring goats in to their to their little home for the night. And what else do I need to do? I need to shut the door on the chickens. I'm gonna go in, wash my hands real well. So I'm right outside Sai's window. He's like, my mom is vlogging outside my window. Yes, I am, son. Did spaghetti last night, enough to feed the world. I like to serve my spaghetti then as baked spaghetti the next night and get more in the freezer for baked spaghetti freezer meals. Haven't done that lately. I don't think I have at least, or maybe I have. Anyway, more baked spaghetti is gonna go down for dinner tonight and baked spaghetti is gonna go in the freezer. And I think, let's see. My watch battery's dead, but I think even after all of that is done, I will be in bed with my pile of books by 10. That's my goal. There's my little laundry basket full of all my seed potatoes, so I'm just gonna bring this in, get this in my garden center, AKA living room right now. And in a few days, we will get these planted. I watched a real good video um, over on My Gardener on his channel, and he pretty much just said, you just cut it, cut your potatoes, so each piece at least has one eye on it. Every eye will be another potato plant. And so all of these have an eye or more. I mean, a lot of these I could cut down further. Uh, the smaller potatoes I halved, the larger potatoes I quartered, but there you go. And then one of my YouTube viewers told me, Jay Morrell, you bought enough potatoes for three acres. But what I'm hoping to do is get these planted. We have this second bag, and I believe if I can get these in a, in a cool, dry place, I can wait a few months so I can stagger my planting between the two. So if I get them in the ground now, early April, which again, I'm in zone 6A, I, we should be able to harvest these by July. And then I'm wondering, what do you all think? Do I plant these potatoes then in July 
to harvest end of October-ish? Or do I plant these, I don't know, maybe May or June? Let, let me know your thoughts. Let's make this potato decision together. So I don't have kids up my armpit, so I can tell you these stories now. I'm, I'm hiding in the darkness for a moment. This mama goat and then her little girl baby goat. The lady called me and said, because the mama was still in milk, she had a lot of people who were interested. I had told her several days ago I wanted her, but that we were trying to get our fencing done. So then she just messaged me and she was like, look, if you can't get her, I've got people lining up for her. And she, she gave me the idea. She said, even if you have a large dog crate, she said they're small enough that you could keep them in that temporarily while you're getting your fencing worked out. So we went for it because big dogs. We got, we got lots of different animal cages and dog crates around here from raising dogs and training puppies and moving chickens and all of that. So that's what we are doing with our mama goat and her little baby. During the day they are out. The mama is on a 30 foot line and the baby just stays right with her mama and we have them staked right by where their fencing is going, so they're getting used to the area. And then at night, we're bringing them into our animal room. The animal room is a nice cinder block room in the basement that has two doors on it and its own entry and entrance door. And so that's where we've got chickens brooding, turkeys brooding, where the dogs are sleeping when they're not sleeping by the front door. And where we're also right now, so we've got like our own little Noah's Ark zoo going down in there. That's where we're also keeping little mama goat and baby goat. So we're gonna go bring them in now. Here we go. Basement barn. Mama's real pretty. She's got blue eyes. And baby's a doll baby. <laughs> you got some more in your pockets, Liam? See, grandmother always has grain in her pockets for her animals. Yep. So now you'll be, <laughs> you'll be Farmer Liam. And then here, we've got a whole pile of chickens sleeping. Okay, so with our big thing of spaghetti, we are getting a big uh, 10 by 16 bacon dish for baked spaghetti tonight. And then we'll be putting two in the freezer for baked spaghetti freezer meals. And you were telling me you love baked spaghetti, right, Liam? Yep, we do Yes, too. yes. Especially when you are. Mm, oh, yes, of course. Well, you guys are helping me tonight. So all I do is a layer of sour cream on the top, and then we'll do cheese. And then we have a loaf of French bread from Walmart that I'm gonna do homemade garlic bread. Uh, basically, just where I cut it open, put butter and garlic salt on it, and we'll put that in the broiler setting, yay. Okay, so here is the baked spaghetti for the freezer that Liam and Amelia did. Now they're gonna help me do this garlic bread. Okay, so there's Liam's baked spaghetti, and then there's Liam's and Amelia's garlic bread. Happy Saturday. I just feel like standing here making pancakes. So I'm gonna do this whole bag of pancakes up. I'm gonna do probably half regular, half chocolate chip. It'll be lots of fun. And then obviously a bunch will be going in the freezer. This is a, what is it, a 10 pound bag. So yeah, we'll have pancakes for breakfast today and tomorrow, and we will freeze the rest for upcoming breakfast. So yeah, bunch of pancakes went down. I made uh, one of those big Rubbermaid tubs full of chocolate chip pancakes, and then another one full of just regular old pancakes. We had our breakfast, pancakes are put up now. We'll probably have them again tomorrow morning, and then I will freeze what's left for pancake freezer meals in the future. Right now you're gonna you're gonna hear pounding in the background. We're having posts drove into the ground out there for our garden fence. Garden fence is coming, goat fence is being finished up. I am gonna be inside most of the day with no real interruptions other than the pegs in the background there. But whenever you all ask, how do you get how do you get that time in your kitchen and your quiet videos filmed? Well, the last couple weeks I have been taking Saturdays to film a whole bunch of kitchen stuff while Travis and the kids do outside projects. And then I'm not trying to fit in. Of course I do like mealtime type videos and vlogging during the week, but I'm not trying to think mostly coherent recipe sharing thoughts in the middle of like juggling kids and family meal time. So I get like dedicated, dedicated kitchen time Saturdays. That's what I'm trying to say. So today I'm going to film a, a video on how to begin raising chickens and basically my, my chicken raising experience over the last 10 years. I've been getting lots of questions on chicken raisins so I thought I could sit down and talk about that and just share some extra videos of our chickens and such. And then I'm gonna do a sit down chatty video about 
work at home moms and work at home mom schedules in particular since so many mamas now suddenly are work at home moms getting questions about that. And then I have several videos to film for my large family table community uh, for the videos that are coming up for the month of April for them. So just gonna be a big film a day in my kitchen, but first I gotta clean up from breakfast. All kinds of stuff on my counter. In my large family table community, I'm gonna do a frugal pantry class for the month of April and show all the essentials for a frugal pantry and some recipe ideas, other tips and tricks. If you guys haven't already, down in the description below, I have a link where you can get my free emergency pantry planning pack and it has a list of many of these items. I just like, I just like to show them as well too. Uh, and it also has shopping lists and planning printables so you can get your own frugal pantry set up as well. Well, happy Monday evening. I did a whole bunch of filming on Friday, as you've already seen. I did not film for the vlog at all this weekend. I've been filming, I got a lot, a lot of cooking videos done this weekend. And actually right now behind me, I've got some beans in the Instant Pot and some ham bone soup going in the stock pot. That's for an upcoming video that you will see uh, probably next after this video. I'm thinking of my little timeline in my head where I show you how to make like 50 meals with one ham. Okay, so Monday evening, good productive day. Still, I'm determined to get those potatoes in. Now I got them all cut on Friday, so it's been about two and a half days or so now. I've heard after you cut them to let them cure one day, two days, three days, four. Anywhere in there, I think we're gonna call it good enough and go ahead and get these in the ground. So here's my tub with those seed potatoes that we planted the other day. And you'll see on the tops, uh, based on the My Gardener videos that I have watched, that's how we want them to look. Kinda get that little crust on there. Let's give it a go, friends. Let's see how this works out. But look at what's happening around the garden. Got our fence going in. So I got this whole section here and then it goes over to the side there. And I wanted to do this whole thing with potatoes. Now we also have this extra like walking space around the garden that we've left. And I wanna do containers and just wanna, wanna do so many things. But I know I definitely have enough potatoes to at least do this section and get this party started. I'm waiting to get my uh, row lines put up. You can see we've added this little, it's just a movable fence. And we've got the chickens, little baby chickens. Of course, they're getting up on their outdoor roof there. But they've been having fun free ranging and such like the big chickens. There's the big mama chickens. Dogs are really carrying on, being dogs. Potato with eye going in the ground. Perfect, Liam. We'll be farmers yet. So Daniel and Amelia have come to help and their job is to pick rocks, any rocks they see, out of the garden.
Okay, so it's getting pretty late now. It's almost eight. We got our sunset going down, but we got this whole area planted well over a hundred potato plants went in the ground. I also was able to do some good brainstorming and thinking about uh, maybe on that last row I could do squash and zucchini and cucumbers and vining type things and then I could kind of trellis them up the side of um, the garden fence there that we have. Anyway, just thinking, I've got a stump up there. That's a good sitting and thinking stump. So now we're gonna go through the yard, work on picking up toys and stuff. Also, we had a bunch of leaves there, and so we've been working on getting leaves into our chicken coop to work on making our own compost. And then I can't, I can't leave the garden without going through the fence. But anyway, we also found some uh, branches and stuff we put in there, just making some more roost for them. So the baby goat and the mama goat the last few days have been in, I don't think I haven't vlogged this yet, but they've been in their new fenced area and the dogs have been in there and again everybody's getting to know each other Travis has cleared a bunch of land down there too and I'm thinking I'm planning this out I got a whole lot of chickens a lot of turkeys a lot of other poultry in the works I guess I need to do a video of like my whole sudden homestead plan but I went ahead and I ordered the guinea fowl the geese and the ducks, but I've staggered my orders so they're not coming until end of June, about the time that I will process all of our meat birds. And then we will raise them, and these chickens and turkeys down here will be well within our flock and such. What I'm thinking of doing, poultry building wise, is this little shed up here that I'm using right now for 11 hens. It would probably be fine with another dozen or so hens in there because I let my chickens free range. So it's not like, they're not pinned up all the, so all the time and always living in their house. This is just a safe place for them to sleep at night. But I definitely want to do another chicken coop building. So I have 11 laying hens already and right now I'm raising another 36 more chicks. But out of the 36 that I'm raising, one of my good best friends, she was all set up for chickens, all ready to go, and she has just had trouble finding chickens. So I'm going to pass a dozen of the 36 that I'm raising over to her. But I'm thinking, Home, homesteading plans out loud here. If I get another chicken coop building going, I may put chickens and turkeys down the hill there. And then up here in this smaller one, I might do like ducks, geese, and guinea fowl or something. Some combination. It's all coming together though. Uh, but I'm sure I'll need a second building and that's all part of the plans. And then for the meat birds, Definitely, I've been looking at plans for chicken tractors and such, and I found this really cool thing, just in researching it, called a zip tie dome. And so, and I'll put the link in the description below, but what it looks like is like a kid's jungle gym, and it's got zip ties and PVC pipe, and you put netting on it, and you can get one that's the size for 50 to 100 birds, but then it's also movable. And I have some nice cleared land, over yonder that I was thinking that we will put the meat birds in that once I get them past the first few weeks of their brooding phase of course and then move them and then we only have those for about eight weeks or so before we process them so all the homesteading thoughts coming together so they're working on gathering up chickens and turkeys Gabriel and I are gonna go down and get the mama goat and the baby goat and get them in their crate for the night animals are put up this is great big uh, pipe excavation project we want to have one of those hand pumps that's not dependent on electricity installed, but it's kind of like you give a mouse a cookie. So Travis is digging up the pipe that goes from the well out there to the house for us. They're gonna actually replace that pipe, do a few other things, and then get that hand pump installed. So here is what's for dinner tonight. We had a ham bone that I cooked for a couple hours. So there's little pieces of ham in here, all kinds of veggies. Yum, yum. Happy Tuesday morning. Gabriel's got spinach going in seed pods. Liam is doing cucumbers. Yes, and then Amelia just finished. You just did two trays of radishes, didn't you? And then more garden report are cabbages. Look at that. I think that took like all of four days. Still no little carrot tops yet. We got carrots done. What else is over there? Bunch of tomatoes. Liam did two more trays of cucumbers. 
Yeah, and I think these these last little three are carrots as well. Hadn't even had breakfast yet, but we're we're farmers, aren't we? <laughs> Working on our seeds some more. So a little tour of what we've been finishing up as we can this morning. Um, we got this filled with cucumbers and cucumbers. This whole tray, Amelia did these. She did two trays of radishes. This is our cabbage we did a few days ago. I think that was like a four day <laughs> germination period. We have carrots here, all kinds of tomatoes, all kinds of tomatoes except there's one little extra row of carrots there. Kids have helped me with these and it's just been, been a whole lot of fun. So I was just standing here finishing up. Uh, this whole front part is marigolds. This section is sugar pumpkins. This whole back tray here is chard. Then I have a section of eggplant here. I've done the labels and everything from the label on down is that plant. Uh, more cucumber. The last back row is marigolds. Whole tray of cucumbers. That was Liam's planting this morning. And then Gabriel's planting was a whole tray of spinach. Now, obviously, I've got a whole window with more seeds left, and there's gonna be a lot that we directly plant in the garden as well. But I also wanted to have the joy of getting some stuff going while we can and then flower wise because i love planting flowers i'm going to do a bunch of nasturtiums and marigolds um and morning glories morning glory is my favorite and i'm going to get those morning glories going along the garden fence then uh yeah there's some more sunflowers there so it's just going to be fun getting all this going uh, we got over 100 potatoes started last night yay Still got a whole lot of potatoes left and then a whole other 50 pound bag of potatoes. So I wanna try growing potatoes all the different ways. I know I've talked to so many mamas who you can't do a garden, can't dig in the ground. Maybe they're in a townhouse, uh, maybe they're in, I know one mom ordered it as, she, you know, she felt like she was more in a show house with an HOA and there wasn't a lot that they could do in their yard. However, I've talked to several moms about growing potatoes and carrots and root vegetables in buckets. I was even reading this morning about doing potatoes in trash bags and laundry baskets. So we're just gonna get all kinds of things started. So what I'd like to do now is go out. I know Travis and kids are working. I've got to wrangle up Benjamin, he's been busy. But today, I would like to get potatoes going in trash bags. I got a whole box of, of trash bags, so yay. I also saw you can order garden bags. You can order the tote, the little uh, like fabric totes. You can order official garden bags, but I've been reading people say you can also just use trash bags. So that's, that's what I have, that's what we're gonna use. And then I also, I wanted to do, at least donate two of my laundry baskets to the cause. So I'll be doing this. You can do it along with me or you can watch and see uh, what is gonna turn out. I also want to go after, see just all those leaves behind those bushes. I would like to, my hope for today, uh, to continue to pull leaves out and get them, get them over in the chicken coop. I will also give my disclaimer, always a disclaimer with everything. Uh, I have grown flower gardens forever various, in various configurations. And as my little song and dance goes, I've done two 1,200 square foot gardens. But with both of those, it was like I had the garden tilled. I think I got seeds and plants in end of May, early June. Most of the stuff I planted grew. You can look, if you look on Instagram and then the hashtag Jamerell Gardens, you can see all the way back. We've got like baby Liam sitting on pumpkins and stuff. It all worked out in the end. Definitely nothing professional. Even today, the soil that I'm gonna put in bags and clothes baskets, Travis has been working with ground, digging stuff up, clearing stuff. He's got a lot of like dark black, looks like rich soil 
That's what I'm gonna fill these trash bags with. I have not tested my soil. I've done nothing to amend my soil. Growing up on a horse farm, we've always had piles of dry horse manure and that went on the plants in the garden. So I will look into locally. Of course, I'm working with uh, making my own compost with my chicken litter, but a lot of that, it's not quick stuff. I'm not gonna have stuff for my chickens I can get on my gardens like now. That's more like by next garden season. So. I I totally say and recognize that this is a journey. I know I'm gonna get a lot of stuff in the ground. I know I'm gonna get a lot of food. We are growing a lot of food. I also know I'm gonna have a whole lot of failures and I'm gonna do a whole lot of this wrong and I'm gonna learn a lot of stuff. Uh, I will put links down in the description of this video from many other people who know what they're doing and they've been doing this longer. This is just me. Uh, bringing you along on this journey of figuring stuff out. Got some chicken egg shells to go for the chickens. Oh yeah, girlfriend, mm-hmm. So Travis is gonna bring me up about four or so scoops of the black dirt for my trash bag party that's happening. So it's raining, got a spring rain going on. I have, let's see, two, four, six, I have eight trash bags so far. And I see you, Benjamin, and I just took some scissors and poked some little holes at the bottom. Travis has brought me four loads of dirt, but I told him, go get me two more. So he's bringing two more back. Got a whole other box of trash bags. We are just gonna go all out with these trash bag potatoes. My helpers, Liam's working on filling that bag. Benny, are you sawing your dirt? Good job. So Amelia has been filling pots with dirt for me and having the time of your life, right, Amelia? <laughs> been filling all those pots, and then here's how our bags are coming. These have dirt in it. We have not done potatoes in them yet. We're getting ready to take a popsicle break. And then I've gone through and I've got holes poked in the rest of these bags all the way down to there. The kids asked how many are we going to do and I'm like, well, we got a lot of potatoes. So I also have my clothes basket collection there. We're going to try those out as well. We just had a big popsicle break, but look what has come up. Big, big storms are coming. It rained on us earlier, but this we'll have to actually go inside for. Kids are getting a last jump in. These bags, they have their little holes in the bottom. We don't have any potatoes planted in them, but at least we got them started. Hopefully this evening we can come back out and work on this some more. just counted for me. I think we've got 23 or 25-ish uh, trash bags. What I've been doing, and I know it's loud because Travis and Zion are working on stuff behind me, about three shovel full, full, fulls <laughs> full of dirt um, goes in each bag, and then three potato pieces. Yes, the potatoes just keep on figuring and figuring around here. I don't think I'm gonna get to um, where I wanna test out doing them in laundry baskets or the tires today, but I could at least, Travis said he has two old tires. You just never know with a car guy. He might've had six, who knows? But from what I've read, you're supposed to take, supposed to, I mean two may work just fine. Stack three tires, fill them with dirt, and then put three or four potatoes in there. So, I'm gonna try it with two, cause why not? I was also thinking, I mean, nothing else is planted, but in doing my planning, today I was thinking, you know, next I could probably go ahead and sow carrots and radishes directly into the ground here. I know that there's something you can plant in spring. After that, I told Amelia, she's been filling all these little flower pots here with dirt. I told her that we'll get a bunch of zinnia packs that she can plant in there. But already, um, in my head, I was thinking, I need some raised beds, too. <laughs> so, I know you can take the, uh, like, the galvanized steel stock tanks, the water tanks, and use those as raised beds. And I was already looking on my tractor supply site today, thinking, Travis could get some, we could get some of those. I think you could even have them delivered. By the way, futuristically, I would love to have the steel raised bed tanks on the outside of the garden. 
so I'm using all my space. Have plenty going on in here, but then raised beds along the exterior. Oh, so many good ideas. And then, of course, I've been watching Roots and Refuge over there. She was talking about trellises and vertical gardening and just all kinds of wonderful things like with her squash and stuff, squash envy. So I'm gonna watch her trellising videos some more and then make Travis watch them and get some of that trellising action going on down the middle of this garden. That'll be real good. So all, all, all of my gardening thoughts are coming alive. <laughs> good morning, Biscuits. Are you having coffee and Bible time with me? Huh? Is that what we're doing? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You were outside with the chickens, weren't you? I looked outside this morning and the 11 laid hens are just out water the yard. Their little door came open last night. Got my coffee going. If this cat lets me, I don't know that he'll let me. I was gonna get my Bible out, have my Jesus time and journaling time and coffee time, but I may have to have some biscuit snuggles time first. So I finished reading the book of James this morning. I finished the book of Hebrews yesterday. That took me about two days to read Hebrews. You need out? Okay, okay, oh yes, oh yes, come on. There you go. Enjoy yourself. So in this video, we got the last of the fencing done for the current fencing projects. We got the coat settled. We have tons of potatoes planted. In my next video, I will show how I'm planting potatoes in clothes baskets. Travis also found me three five gallon buckets yesterday. Um, what else did we find? Oh, and in that corner of the garden where we have a big pile of dirt, I'm thinking I really might just plant a bunch of potatoes in what's left of that dirt, have Travis cover it with another load. Potatoes everywhere. I was talking about garden plans with a friend of mine yesterday. She works at a local greenhouse. And so we were talking about how I could really go ahead and get my peas in as well. And she told me how her grandma just with her peas did the, the little staking method where you put a stake at either, put a stake every so many feet, and you just run a string. So I thought, I think I can handle that. I think I might do that with my peas. So gardening plans are coming together. And I know I shared some pictures on Instagram. I was showing the, the tra trash bag method with the potatoes that were just giving it a try. Might totally fail. Might be the best thing ever. A lot of ladies wanted to know more about it. I also had some comments that, you know, it's probably toxic to do potatoes and trash bags. So all I know is I will link a bunch of articles and uh, several video tutorials where I watched about it and I read about it. I'm, I'm giving it a go, but you certainly don't have to. But if you'd like to read about it, if you'd like to watch some videos about it, those will be linked below. I know the DIY network even had some articles about doing potatoes and trash bags. So I don't know the, uh, the science behind it, but I figure if you could do potatoes in laundry baskets and in tires, and other methods, I'm giving the trash bag method a go as well. But there's also those grow bags. Facebook shows me ads for those all the time. I will link those below. I just did it, you know, I've I've been getting lots of stuff setting up our homestead and so I'm really just trying to use what we have. So I do have buckets, I did have trash bags, I, I do have dirt, I do have potatoes. So I wasn't gonna order anything else, but depending on where you are and what your yard setup is, something like that may be best for you. So, I'm gonna end this vlog here. I will definitely talk with you in those comments below. Let me know what you're getting planted. How does your garden grow? What's in your garden? Again, I am in zone six, so there's some more things I'm gonna get in the ground next vlog coming up. As always, follow me on Instagram if you don't already, so you can see a little more of the real-time stuff, and I'll talk to you in the comments below, and see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.